Hey guys, so we're working on the P pump head. Oh, P pump six seven head, I should say. Just getting ready to surface it off here. Um, it does have a warp in it, so I know we're gonna have to surface a bunch off. But uh, I just wanted to. Uh, I'm gonna throw it in a time lapse so you guys can see it. I've done this process a few times for you guys, uh, but I'll show it again on this one for the guys that haven't watched the other builds. All right, guys, we got our surfaced off here. Surface went pretty good, didn't have to take too much off. I think we took, yeah, I think it was about nine and a half, ten thou, which is about what I figured we were gonna have to take off. That's where I set the recession. So we were into about nine to 10 thou, brings us a recession where I wanted it to be. So we're good to go. I'm gonna throw this up on the mill now, and then we're going to O-ring it. Um, but I do gotta do a little bit of thinking on what I'm gonna use for a head gasket. So I'm gonna have to do a little bit with that because um, I need to use a 6.7 head gasket, but I might have to port the head gasket to use it. So anyways, um, and I might drill the holes for the steam. I haven't decided yet. It's a little bit of uh, contemplation before we go ahead. But anyways, that'll be in this video, um, and uh, I'll, you'll see me over at the mill. <clears throat> All right, guys, we're over at the mill. What, uh, what I'm going to do here... I'm gonna cut this gasket for, or sorry, this head for six, seven gasket. I was thinking about which one to do and I wasn't sure which one to do, but I've decided I'm gonna use a six, seven gasket because I've never done a six, seven gasket on one of these. Um, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the rings for six, seven size, like so the diameter for six, seven, and then I'm gonna drill the steam holes, which I've never done in a VP44 head. Um, so hopefully, uh, we don't screw the head up doing that, but I'm gonna cut the o-rings first. I think all these heads are roughly the same inside But I can't see down inside there. So we'll drill one little tiny hole and just see what happens worst case scenario I could put a plug in it if I had to or something but uh, We're gonna uh, cut the cut the, all the, the o-ring grooves. I'm gonna drill the holes for the um, the steam holes and then That'll have, probably have it done that for for this video will be done um, and then we'll be on to the next video. The next video will be, well, cause I have to put it in the wash. So it, I want it to be in the wash for a couple hours, but as soon as we get it washed, um, then we will be, um, install stem heights, um, the valve springs, you know, that's valve seals, that stuff. Um, and then, uh, we put be putting the O-ring wire in. So anyways, uh, we'll, uh, I guess I can, I'll do, I'll do the first five and then I'll come back off a time lapse and we'll do the last one. All right guys, so for the guys that have never watched me do this, this is the cutter that we use, which is actually an inside cutter for cutting inside grooves, but nonetheless, it's a 39 thou cutter. We insert a 41 thou ring. Now on a five knot or on a 24 valve Cummins head, the, it is the, Injector is center to the bore, so it's easy to line them up. You could, all I use is a basically a piece of rod in my drill chuck. Put it in there. And there's lots of ways of doing this. Lots of guys now use CNC equipment. Um, I honestly, I, I don't have CNC equipment, so I can't do it that way. I'd love to have a CNC mill, um, you know, like a Rottler or a Centroid for you guys that are in the business. Um, you would know, you would know uh, both of those. Beautiful machines. They're expensive though. Like I looked into the one that the, the well, they're basically both the same price, but they're like $500,000 Canadian for a basic tooling package in one of those units. So you got to do a lot of work, a lot of, you know, you got to have a lot of stuff going through to be able to make any money. But anyways. Um, so what, basically what I do, I don't know if you guys will be able to really see this in the video. I'll try to get it, but so if you watch the, the rod, you can actually see the rod deflect. And I don't know if you guys will be able to see that real well, but basically all you have to do is you just bring it over. You can feel it when you're moving down too, but it's not touching there now. And then basically you just have to do the same the other way. This thing set again here. Went all caddy while it's on me here. So basically just do the same thing going the other way. Oh yeah, 
yeah, definitely gonna go a little bit. Then all we gotta do is go back down. I put my hand here because I know that if I get three fingers under it, I can pull it out without hitting the surface. So it just gives me an idea. It's 500, or basically five and a half inches downstroke, but just you hold your hand there and then you know. Tape it back in. And you wanna make sure, like I had to machine the bottom of this to get it so that we could use it. Um, so that's just, something if you guys are for you guys that have mills or working shops or whatever this I, I don't know it it's not really a not really a uh, a secret I guess maybe it is a secret but it's not a secret secret like it used to be years ago okay so we got it we're good there we're good there 19 thou up Basically, all they're going to do is bring it down until it touches. Be here soon. You can hear it just starting to touch there. Now I'm going to come down uh, 28 thou is what I'm going to do with this one too. I have a GRO, so a digital readout just above the screen here. You guys won't be able to see it right at the moment, but. Then I just let it dwell there for a second. Make sure you get it cut all the way around. And then back her off. And then now you just bring it down, obviously. Turn the spindle off. So that's basically all we have to do for that. Now what I gotta do is I'm gonna figure out, I'll put this in a time lapse. I'll drill all these and I'll bring you guys back to the last one. We'll see what happens. I've never drilled one of these heads before, so I don't know what's gonna happen. So for the sake of uh, me screwing around, I'll, I'll drill all the holes and I'll show you the last one. It's just drilling hole. I guess I could do it with a hand drill, but I got it on the mill, so I might as well do it with the mill. All right, guys, I'm gonna drill the last two holes. Just, it's easy to do the last two. Um, uh, <clears throat> no problems as far as drilling, other than the drill got stuck on one of the holes, but it didn't break, so we're, we got lucky. But it's not really, you could do this in a drill press, you could do it by hand. The drill bit I'm using here is an 11, uh, no, sorry, 11 64th drill bit. And you just want to watch when you go to break through. Good, right. Here, right there, yeah. I don't know if you guys will be able to hear that or not, but you can feel it break through. And you just, you don't want to push very hard when you're breaking through because you don't want the drill bit to catch. And there is something I think part of the ridge may be in there or something, the way that the casting comes around. We're kind of right on the edge of it. So you just want to be careful and not grab that, that edge, right? Because if you grab that edge, you won't like it. Because that's usually where you break a drill bit. So I'm just kind of eyeballing it. That's why I marked it with the marker. These holes are smaller than what's in the gasket, considerably smaller. Uh, well, I shouldn't say considerably smaller. They're smaller than what's in the gasket. That's why I just took the marker. I just took a marker and marked it. And uh, we'll drill holes and they'll line up with it. I don't know. I honestly, I want to cut some stuff apart, but I need to get some scrap stuff to cut apart. Um, I have a few, but I don't have all of the stuff yet. So I, I haven't been able to uh, got everything figured as far as that goes. Uh, but I do want to cut a bunch of stuff apart just so I can show you guys. But that is her. You got the holes drilled in it. <clears throat> so we got the holes, we got the, the O-ring groove cut. We got the steam holes drilled. 
like I said, I'm not 100% sure whether we need the steam holes or not. I've done 12 valves with no steam holes, and I've done some with steam holes. Um, but I'm using the 6.7 gasket, so I figured, well, it can't hurt because it's going to flow the coolant in from in between the cylinders, being that it's a uh, the, the, with the style of block. But um, anyways, uh, like, subscribe, hit me down in the comments, and uh, we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks, guys.